glad we're back, with some more oxygen not included. But first, a quick graphical update. This is called True Tiles. Now, you can notice the difference between the two. One, leaves all of our tiles the normal colour no matter what we're doing with them, and True Tiles changes the colour of the tiles depending on what stone it's made out of. For example, this is granite down here, and because it's granite, it looks different to the sandstone. There is not going to be much difference just yet because most of the stuff we've been building has been all out of similar materials, except for maybe this igneous rock insulation up here. But anyway, we're going to give that a go for today and see what the response from people is. First things first after all of that, uh, we're going to put in a ladder pole system. We should have had fire poles in ages ago, I just completely forgot about it. This is going to make transport up and down so much faster. Oh, uh, guys maybe mop up more of that. I just want to make sure that stuff is well taken care of. I don't want that accidentally getting into our water supply. Actually, while we're at it, eh, let's just wall in that there. Makes it a little bit harder for anything to get in here. All liquids should fall down this way and not be able to overflow into that tank, which I think we're going to have to make some changes to. We'll cover that in a minute. Oh, and heat. People are worried about the heat coming out of this thing, and I get it. The heat coming out of this could be a problem. However... For now, our base is nice and cool, we're not going to stifle our crops for a long time, and by the time it happens we'll probably have a bunch of ranches up and running to keep us tidied over. Uh, at the same time, we do have an ice biome over here we can tap into, so for now, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, instead, what we're going to concentrate on is getting everyone out of here, getting them into atmos suits and breaking down to the oil biome. we got to start getting into the plastic, steel, that type of stuff, which should be fairly handy, though I have made a few mistakes. But first, first, ranches. We want to get these uh, incubators automated. And point out to me, I shouldn't be using cycle sensors. I used them first time around, and it turns out they don't work, but it completely blanks. I knew there was something wrong, I have to use timer sensors instead. That's the play. You see, when it comes to the cycle sensors, they don't have a 600 second cycle. This one you can set to 600. Or let's just say we set that to 560 seconds, and we set this to 40 seconds. Or, actually wait, that's the wrong way around. The reason we did it this way is there's 600 seconds in a cycle. This means that for 40 of those seconds, this incubator will switch on, and then for the rest of it, it turns off. If we try and use the cycle sensors, what'll happen is, every second we leave it on, it'll slowly start going out of sync. You know, the cycle sensors don't do the full 600 seconds, there's a whole bunch of annoyance with it, but if you want a basically sh sh cliff notes version, these things just allow you to turn it on for a set period of time, so long as you make sure that both pieces add up to 600 seconds, it will always come on at the same time every day, and that's important for scheduling. For example, Jack here is going to be a sleeper unavailable during these time frames, so we want them to only be going to do the ranching during a certain time of the day. Uh, right now, where are we? We're right about here. Actually, this is a perfect time of the day to have one of these turn on. There! That is just about right. Then we're going to want to send, set this one up to be just after it. So the moment this thing switches off, or this thing switches off, the next incubator switches on. That way we don't have two of them on at the same time, drawing power. Just easier on our power grid in general. Okay, we've hooked up the power. The timer sensor has just hit here. We've uh, sort of offset these, so this one is now just after this one. We just hit reset once uh, this one has expired. So once this one went out of its green and into the red, we just reset this timer so that it was just after it. Now, this is on, so Jacques comes along, and we're going to give a hug to that egg. Now, currently its incubation is, change per cycle is 5%. Once it gets a bit of a hug, which God knows how the eggs know they're being hugged. Uh, you, come on, speed up a bit. Done. Incubation should go up by 20%. So now it's incubating four times fa five times faster. Whatever. It's perfect. Um, actually, I might reset this one after it. What's our schedule looking like for Jack? Oh yeah, Jack's got plenty of time. Alright, so once this one hits the red, and a little bit, we want to make sure that the automation has time to kick in, then we reset this one. So this one now turns on. That means we're never drawing more than the required number of watts at the same time. And Jack will come along and give the stone hash egg a hug. Done. Now over here we've left this one going. Now I want to see why I was finding having such problems with this in the past, because it's been a while. This is where we're going to leave these timers. It's not actually hooked up to anything. I just want to refresh my memory on why cycle sensors didn't work. Hey, with that done, there's a few more things we need to take care of. We are going with the traditional plan, the very, very, very old school traditional plan which is where we wall in our base. We basically wall in our base and use that as our core. And then anyone who wants to leave the base has to go through an Atmosuit dock. Uh, the tradition was we put our oxygen production on either the left or the right. In this case, it's on the right, which means our output or our exit is going to be on the left, which means we want to come out to about here. Hmm. See, if that ladder goes down there... Oh, no, it's going to go right past that obsidian. 
Hmm. Maybe the other side? Uh, no, that seems a bit... Uh, that's also going to go past the volcano. Damn it, we're past volcanoes no matter what we do. Hmm. Let me think for a second and pick us a good location to get out of here. Well, I think we don't have a choice. We've got to do a ladder system down through here, past this volcano, and we'll have to somehow insulate this volcano from our transport network. We can do it, it'll just be slightly annoying. But in that case, we're going to have to squish all this water across. So I think our water tank is about to become, well, one story taller. Oh, and you can go there, there, there. Yeah, give me a minute here while we uh, clean this place up a bit and make it more presentable. Well, I think we have successfully shrunk the water tank a little bit. Uh, it's unfortunately resulted in a little bit of hypothermia for four of our duplicates. Um, they'll get over it. Probably. Uh, anyway, let's unblock our new uh, blueprints that we've gotten. We've got a lemon jelly jacket. Uh, best to keep jelly-filled puffer jackets away from sharp corners. Okay. Tops and onesies. Nifty. Got anything else for us? Yep. Some kind of socks. I missed them. Never mind. Okay. We've got that done. We've got food secured. We've got oxygen secured. We're... Hey, you... Put that critter into the... Mm. Okay, that was my bad. I probably should have had this sorted out already. It's just you can't select smooth hatchlings until smooth hatchlings have been discovered, so we had to wait until that thing popped. Plus, it's going to be a lot a while. What are you at in terms of age? Yeah, sure, you've only just popped open. But the moment we get that out, we can stick in another smooth hatchling and start getting this place up and running. We want to have uh, as many of these going as we possibly can. In fact, I think it's time for we got some automation in so we can start taking these things out of here. Uh, stone hatchling, yep. Automation is next step, I think. Wait, 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 wait. Printing pod, printing pod activation. Uh, let me see. Do we have any narcoleptics? No. Hey, one of the suggestions that was made was I should roll all three of them on the hill of narc narcoleptic and then pick one of the best narcoleptics. I like that idea. It'll take a little bit of re-rolling. After far, far, far too much spinning, this is the three we got. I actually skipped over two the whole way through. It, it, you get rolling and you just get into a roll, so to speak. Anyway, we've got a... Uh, Bert over here with suit wearing and tidying. Uh, we've got Devin with tidying, doctoring, operating, and Lyra with tidying and farming. I'm thinking I'm going to go with Bert. Dedicated hauler. If nothing else they'll be good at, they'll just be going around the place tidying, them, tidying it up. And they're a quick learner, so I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. But this one here looks good, but we've already got three people who could become mechatronics engineers, so this is kind of pointless. We've already got a doctor. Tidying and farming we don't really care about, so yeah, please welcome Gamer43 to the team. Uh, I assume they're related to Agent 47, but, you know, they were the gamer. They, they weren't the killer. All right, we should get you a bed immediately. Uh, in fact, yeah, we get you a dining table. We've got a bed set up. We've got enough food. In fact, we don't have to do anything. In fact, we also have enough oxygen. Currently, there is only enough oxygen coming out of here to support 10 duplicates, but we could always hook up the second pump for another five. Hmm. And then once we've maxed out this oxygen production, we should probably put in something else. Maybe not another uh, hydro electrolyzer, but... Uh, Maybe, maybe one of the old school ones we'll have to see. Oh, and uh, people were saying, why didn't I just use this as a water source? I've been looking around for a water source for a while, and they're like, why not use this one? Cool steam vents, you pretty much need steel and plastic to take care of them properly, unless you want to do some sort of, you know, very low-tech design that you'll probably have to rip out again later. So I think we'll just hold off on that one and hope we find some better water vents where we're going. Before I get distracted again, let's automate this place in here quickly. Okay, automation-wise, we are going to want ourselves shipping. It was an auto sweeper. I uh, will chuck that right there. We're going to make that a gold conveyor loader. You're going to be for all the eggs. And then we're going to need a conveyor rail. I think the plan here would be to run this up all the way to here. Actually, we could use copper. Um, Yeah, one second. I actually want to delete all of those rails for a minute. We'll make, we'll make all of them out of the one color because I'm not sure what happens if we don't now that we've got that mod installed. All right, copper, you're going to go up here. Then we're going to bring you all the way up to this section, and then we're probably going to run it straight to the bottom of here. Uh, we want to make some sort of uh, evolution chamber for the, the hatches over there. So, in that case, we might as well start dropping dirt. Like, all of this stuff, we should drop it down to lower levels, because otherwise we're just going to have to sweep it later. Let me see. Let's pick the top of the map, or how big we want to make our core base. The, uh, the plan here is to, say, make a square, say, from, like, this big, covering the map. So we square this out, and this will be our core base. And then everything outside of that, they need to be in Atmo suits. So we need to pick a roof. And I think the roof is probably going to be here. Yeah, how big do we want to make this? Hmm. Yeah, well, give me one second. 
Oh, and while this goes on, there's a few skills that are going to need to be assigned out. Uh, Skinny here has got the actual chops to be able to handle being a mechatronics engineer. Done. Now they're a mechatronics engineer, we have someone who can build all of those conveyor rails and all of the automation that's going to go in down here. But first, we're just going to do a little bit of excavation up here. Just a teeny scooch. As you can see, all of the dirt and chunks and tiles and all that are slowly dropping down as we replace them with these sandstone tiles. It's the whole reason we just leave all the dirt tiles around the place for so long. There's just no point not doing it. Actually, that can go in there. Soon we'll drop all the rest of it down. There will be a few places, like above certain walls, where you won't be able to drop everything down. But when it comes time to sweep, we'll probably put where we're going to sleep somewhere down here, nice and low. Though, oh, I want to be careful here when we drop all this stuff. The reason being, if we drop it a little bit too far, we're going to end up in the water tank. And that's the worst place to store everything. It takes forever to get anything done. And I think they've got all of that done. We just need to clean out this floor, though, so that we can run the... Uh, I mean, the whole reason we're going through all of this is so we can get these conveyor rails and run them through here, through the floor, instead of running them through the building. It's just slightly cleaner. And we've got the time to do it, so why not? You can all get replaced with sandstone, and actually, you can all get replaced with sandstone as well. Should only take them another few moments and we'll be all done. Would you look at that? Okay, we made a few mess-ups here and there, but most of the debris is gone. We got our base nice and clean, and it didn't take us an awful amount of effort or a huge amount of sweeping. We'll be able to do some sweeping later once our duplicates have leveled up a bunch, but for now... Uh, you know what? Let's just keep that going straight-ish, and we'll dump all the eggs out right there. Perfect. Uh, we're still going to have to power this whole thing, which reminds me... Uh, you guys get in there done and that will drop all of the eggs off that side now we're going to need a couple of other things to go with that namely we're going to want to put in some water in there to make sure that the uh, the hatches can't breathe and that should give us an automatic drowning chamber for all of them right done done water to be inbound now we need to get this thing to shuffle in all the eggs into this conveyor loader uh, i think a simple way to do that oh actually i just realized any time we need to top up these uh Incubators are going to have to take the egg from all the way over there, which is slightly annoying. We probably should have built the uh, the incubators closer to over here, but uh, you know what? It doesn't make a difference. Much of a muchness. Uh, you. We're not going to make you sweep only, in fact. We are going to allow people to dump stuff in there, and we're going to say we want all of these eggs right now. That means everyone can load them up, uh, including the ones that are in here. In fact, you are no longer necessary. So, oh, allow manual use. So we want to allow everyone to use this for now. Uh, the reason being, we want all of those eggs out of there, and we want them dumped into that section. Uh, but we prefer this all done before the first eggs get there. Uh, you know what? Let's grab the snips tool. We'll just snip that for a minute. How many are in there? Okay, I think, I think that's everything. That might be every single egg we've got. Yep, that's the lot. That's every single egg. In that case, we can switch that away from manual use. There's no errands currently pending. No pending deliveries. Perfect. Uh, if that's away from manual use, that means it'll only pick up the ones that are in here. We're going to grab the conveyor rail, finish that off. And done. Now we have a way to take all of the all of the eggs out of here automatically. They all go up there and get disposed of. And once they hatch, we'll have to put in about... Oof, We'll actually put this up till there's about a thousand kilos of water in there, just to make sure. Otherwise, I've had problems with them not actually evolving in the past. But this means we've got all the meat right here, right beside the electric grill. And whenever we need an egg, we can just grab it and chuck it down there. All right, let's see if we've got any other potential... Ooh, shovel eggs. Ooh, that is really tempting, actually. No, we need somewhere to store them. Where do we put them, though? We need somewhere we can store them long term. You see, to store those things, shovels like to eat through... Well, everything. And they can pretty much pan through all materials except obsidian, diamond, a few other bits and bobs, but I think we have enough resources to be getting on with this. In terms of obsidian, we have about 9,500, so we can do the good old-fashioned design. Let's see here. Been a while since I made one of these, but uh, they're pretty straightforward. First things first, we allow no one in there. In fact, let's just let no one into this section at all. This means no one can get into this section here. They can stand on this side of the door, and from that side of the door they could access here, but they can't access here. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the critter eggs and we're going to set to shovels and we're going to set that to a very high priority of like eight or something like that. Now what happens is when we print these eggs, uh, give me these shovel eggs, please. We hit the print button, the eggs pop out, and then a duplicate should automatically come along, grab the eggs, and they'll dump them all in here. And... Oof. Yep. They managed to catch... You managed to catch one before it fell all the way. That is um, kind of impressive. There we go. All three eggs are down there. What this means is no one else can get in here, though. Since they can't get past this door, they can't reach the eggs, so you don't end up in one of those infinite rooting loops. At the same time, if we do encounter any more shovels around the map, they'll, all their eggs will get dumped down here, and eventually just all the shovel eggs are just going to end up in this section. Now, we'll just leave them there wild, and because these tiles are made of obsidian, they can't dig through that, so they can't actually burrow through that and get it to their side. They also can no longer dig through any pneumatic doors. It used to be only steel, but now it's just any pneumatic door, it seems, so the copper ore should keep them in. I hope. Um, I haven't actually tested that in a while, but I'm pretty sure that's still how it works. Now, when the time comes, though, we would want to get the meat out of there and stuff like that, so what we can do is we can get shipping, we can get an auto-sweeper, we can stick an auto-sweeper in there, that auto sweeper will pull all of the all of the meat, all of the shells, all that stuff, and we'll just stick ourselves like a storage bin on this side with level one for meat and whatever. We don't have to worry about that just yet, but for now, this is just a good way to dump all of those in one side, and we don't have to. Ah. Yep. Yep. Every time. Every damn time. This is gonna play havoc with our CO two levels. Ah, uh, it's going to drive all the CO2. Ah, uh, we're going to lose a bunch of it. Quick, 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 quick. I need someone to uh, finish that immediately. We need them down there and mopping. We want those gas levels to start dropping. Um, well, there we go. There we go. Perfect, perfect. And then they'll pull all the water out. Oh, damn it. Every time I do that. Oh, and how do we have a hatch down here? What? You need to get wrangled. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to actually... You know what, let's just kill you. It's probably faster that way. All right. Perfect. Well, we've got meat. Done. So, that takes care of the automation for this section. Uh, I haven't automated this one yet because we're running a little bit short on gold. What are we up to? 200 kilos? We need about 400, and I figure we'll wait until we've got a few more smooth hatchlings. They should be along quite quickly. We've, we're starting to ramp things up. So, done. 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 Uh, we've now can just about finish walling in our base. And finally putting in some Atmosuit Ducks. I think Atmosuit Ducks can probably go along... Ooh, maybe along here. Would you look at that? It's beautiful! And I do like that sandstone tone tile. Oh, and uh, we also stuck airflow tiles down here. The reason for that is you normally end up with all this carbon dioxide. It collects uh, on top of the water. But we just put in the airflow tiles so they can flow to the side. As well as that airflow tiles aren't bothered by things like water pressure. Even if we ended up making this water tank huge and having lots of water pressure, it could never bust through. Though, more importantly, it lets the carbon dioxide out. You don't end up with that nasty looking carbon dioxide in there. Okay. Down here, I think Atmosuit docks. This is all sealed up this side, up to the top. At the back, we don't really care. We, there is some places up here we would have to seal. You know what? Let's just do that right now before I forget. Back. Yeah, let's just do that all the way up there and... Done. That just means we shouldn't accidentally break out of here anytime soon. Then once that's done, we can put in the Atmosuit docks down here. That is one beautiful section of Atmosuit checkpoints, all made out of gold. Just, uh, lots and lots of gold. And we're also going to need to make the suits for this. So, under stations, we should have an Exosuit Forge. This thing takes a little bit of power, if memory serves. Actually, how much power does it take? It takes 480 watts. Well, you know what that means. Let's just put together a quick one of those, and maybe a smart battery to go with it. Uh, you got copper, gold will do just fine. And then we can uh, attach up a quick wire. Go. Oh, automation. Perfect. And in fact, let's uh, prioritize that automation right there, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, great. Well, that's doing. We've got another printing pod activation. I do have a strange feeling I'm going to be doing a lot of spinning right now. Actually, eh, there's only two of them. Don't need the hatchling eggs, we've kind of got enough of those. So let's re-roll until we've got a bunch of narcoleptic, shall we? Two options have made themselves available. We've got a, a loner narcoleptic who's good at digging, operating, and rocketry. We've got enough operators, we don't need the rocketry. Digging would be nice. However, this one's digging and farming, and just for extra flavor, they're a night owl narcoleptic, which I like the sound of that. So uh, welcome to our second digger. Please welcome Matthew Ebert. 
All right, Matthew, you're going to be assigned immediately to the digging priorities, and we're going to give you some digging skills to go with it. Oh, and Gamer43, they got to put in supplying and storing and downgrading and building and digging. Matthew here is going to be double digging one building. Uh, we'll just go in here and straight into hard digging for you. Actually, I should probably start assigning in a few of these points. Everyone can afford it right now. Boydra here. Easy one. We'll just stick them into Applied Research Science and we'll give them Improved Carrying Level 2. We don't really care about Astronomy just yet. Uh, that leaves them... Yeah, they've got a fair few morale padding left to go. Grumpy Bear here, a little bit more interesting. They've got super hard digging, which is fine, but we kind of want to start putting them down uh, suit sustainability training. Reason being, they're about to start wearing an Atmo suit and getting exosuit training would make them, well, much more stable out there. Uh, Jacques? You are probably just going to go up and carry. We're not going to be letting you outside of the base, so I'm afraid you're stuck with just improved carry. We'll probably move you along this path as well, though. We're going to need to up morale around the base before we allow that. Though you do have... You do have liking for it. You know what? Let's just start you along that path. Ratty, I'm pretty sure I can't remember what I was using you for. Not a clue. Come back to you in a second. Uh, that leaves Trevor. They're going to be stuck inside the base. Grilling too, I think, is important for you. And both of the improved carries. Just so that you can carry more. Improved carry is just a default for everyone as much as you can get it. Now, Uzo here, you've... Hmm, we don't need you demolishing the Gravitas buildings just yet, so that, that, and... Oof. Yeah, it puts you up to ten. That hurts, but it's very doable. Now, our Doctor. Oof. They've also got grilling, but we're going to scrub the grilling off this one in a bit. Oh, I'm not even sure what to do. Well, if you're going to be our Doctor, you're probably going to be going outside as well, so you know what? We'll get you some suit sustainability training. Yeah, that room. Oh. Matthew, you're not going to be able to go outside much. Well, we can put you outside. It's just you're going to be incredibly slow in those Atmos suits. And now let's watch everyone go grab themselves a headache. Yeah, it doesn't seem to hurt them as much anymore. Before, they used to hold their head a lot more. Like it really hurt. Now they almost seem to be enjoying it. Like it's a good pain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it is what it is. Atmos suits. There we are. Now, we are going to need to get ourselves some more gold or copper. Actually, let's chuck out a bit of copper. Give us about 20 pieces of copper there. We're going to need to make a few Atmos suits, and we don't have enough smooth hatches yet making gold for us. While our Atmos suits get churned out, what we're going to need to do is start pumping oxygen into these docks. Now, uh, we do have a one kilo line, but I think, I think we're going to use the secondary. So we can hook you up there. And we can run this pipe down. We're probably going to do something similar to the first round, where we just uh, split them up a little bit, make sure we have bridges so that we can vent this stuff off as needs be. This should be relatively quick. We'll flood the oxygen in there. That can support about five Atmos suit docks. Hmm. Really kind of missing the Rodriguez. You really should have made this bigger. Having 30 dupes to provide oxygen it would be a little bit nicer. You, you, you. You know what? Give me a bunch more bedrooms there. And we'll stick in an extra dining area. Have I got enough beds for everyone? Oh god, I'm letting the radioactive dupes uh, sleep next to someone else. I should definitely make sure they're not on the same schedule. Suits assigned, oxygen is starting to pour in. I think we have one more suit to go. It should be along shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we're waiting for that suit to get together so we can start digging through this. Oh, that's... oh no. Right, that should not be turning into igneous rock. If this is turning into igneous rock, it means the heat from this is leaking out. Which means there's probably a break, and judging by what's going on over here, it's probably over this side. This is cooking some part of the map. We need to shut that down. Um, no, we need that. We need that atmosphere to kick online. Ah, oh, down. Okay. In the meantime, we can dig up here a bit at least, and yeah, let's just keep going up. I suppose. Why not? Let's find out what's all the way at the top of the map. Yeah, the duplicates are going to have a bit of a hard time. They're going to have to queue up to do it, but they'll get there eventually. And in the meantime, once that suit is complete... Uh, did someone finish that copper suit? Oops, my bad. Uh, once that copper suit is finished and loaded into that dock, we can have one person in an atmosphere. I think that we'll wait until we've got at least three or four. Then we're going to put in door restrictions to make sure that only the best can get by. As in those who have, preferably, some sort of decent training at digging or building and or suit wearing. All of those will be important. Uh, we can also get our hands on Sweetles right now, though. Ooh, we need a whole bunch of sulfur to go with those. Ooh, and we can find out what that vent is. Nope, nope, nope. We're going to go down, and we're going to make sure that we seal off whatever this is. Uh, we need to make sure that that's not cooking some biome that might be important to us. Well, we've got two suits filled, so that's something. Uh, new printing pod activation. Do we need another duplicate? Ugh, no, it's just if we put in another duplicate, I'm going to have to start breaking off another oxygen line off of this. 
really wish I'd built like a, a three kilo setup. 1.5 was not quite enough. I was thinking, you know, we're doing casual, but yeah, casual, you should probably still big, build big. Hmm. I suppose we can take one more. Why not? Uh, we'll just have to run an extra line off one of these. Say, yeah, here. If you ever overflow, we can have you eh, put gas into this section. It'll be grand. We've only got four atmosphere docks anyway. Eh, what have we got here? Small bladder, Luddite, and pacifist. Actually, no. This ruling takes too long. <laughs> I, oh, there's another one. Uh, radiation eater. Ooh, converts radiation exposure into calories. Narcoleptic. Cooking, suit wearing, and doctoring. Uh, no, I'm not really feeling either of these. I think we'll just take the care package and we'll move on. Thank you. Okay, have we almost finished up there? Uh, not quite. We're going to lose a few plants along this way, but uh, I'm okay with that. And guys... Get rid of the sand, it's accumulating, and how are we doing on the suits? Okay, we just, that one is slowly but surely getting filled in. Once that one's done, uh, I think we're good enough to start locking these out and only letting our best diggers out, and oh my god, how have you done that? Get yourself out of there, you muppet. Ah, uh, we're just about done. Now what I want to do is clean up this mess here. Uh, these hatches are basically a problem, so we're going to wrangle up a lot of them, and then we're going to slaughter them all. In fact, we may make some room in our fridge. Might get rid of a few things in here, namely, actually, that pinch of peppernut's almost gone anyway, and we have no use for it just yet. You can be composted. Eh, freeze up four kilos. And, ooh, there's 42 kilos worth of pickled meal. I think that can go. Yeah, the muck could last just as long. Actually, you know what? We'll wait till we get the meat out. See, once we've wrangled all of these up, that means they can't eat the meat that drops. If we start killing those, the hatches that are still alive will start eating the meat, and we, yeah, I'm, I've fallen for that trick before. So wrangle them first, then kill them. Oh, that also reminds me, you can kill these things while they're in here. Yeah. No escape, buddy. Sorry, but we don't need you. We've already got eight critters in there. Eh, this is going to take Jack a while. they got to wrangle a lot of critters. Since there's nowhere for them to go, they should just get left there until we do a drag select for killing them all. Jack! God we're, we're on a time limit here, buddy. There you go. Perfect, perfect. Or you could go brush some stone hatches. Great. Let's make sure, actually, what hatches are not collected? If it's only the regular hatches, I don't care about them. Uh, hatches. Pending wrangle, pending wrangle. I think that's the last one. Perfect. Annihilation time. Yep. Jesus. It's the yellow jumpsuit that just really sells it. Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Okay. Finished, finished, finished. Some of them have not finished realizing they're dead yet. Oh, wait, no. They'd actually forgotten a few. Maybe they went off for a snack. Uh, that should give us a little... Oh, God. Uh, I think we need to get rid of some more of the stuff in here. You know what? Pickled meal? Yeah, we're going to get rid of 42 kilos of pickled meal. Bye-bye. And we've built a compost, but I think we're going to need more. You know what? That should be enough compost to get us started. Uh, up here, we're going to go with compostable stuff, which is... Wait, what? No. Rot pile. There we go. The rot pile can go there. Perfect. Now, once the rot pile gets composted, we'll be in a lot better position. Oh, and since we've got the uh, pickled meal being composted, I don't really care about the rest of it. We don't care about turning the polluted dirt into dirt. We've got plenty of the stuff lying about the place. Anyway, this is now finished, which means this needs to be enabled. This needs to be set to clearance vacancy. Suited duplicates may only pass if there is available dock. Yeah, clearance always, or sorry. Clearance vacancy only is now active. Perfect. Then we need to set up this door here to only allow through certain duplicates. Grumpy Bear, definitely. Uh, and no one else is allowed through by default. Let me just check everyone's skills real quick. There we go. Grumpy Bear, Uzo, uh, Zflix, and Matthew Ebert. All of them can now go out this door, but no one else can, which means going through here it should be, well, just people with the correct attitudes. Uh, you, we're going to need... Granite? No. Should he... Igneous rock should be fine. We're going to need igneous rock right about oof, there. We're going to cancel. Oh, damn it. There. Everyone will come down. 
they'll put that block there and then we might have to do a little bit more diagonal digging. We want to like push this back just a little bit so we've got a, a bit of room to work with. We're going to want to put a ladder down here. In fact, or not a ladder, a, um, a fire pole. So give me a minute while they get sorted on, started on this. Oh wow, Matthew is really slow. They are just, uh, this is going to take a while. Oh well, this is what I get for not picking perfect dupes early on. I probably should have been more careful with my dupe choices, but uh, it's an easy playthrough. Let's see here. Uh, anyone want to get around to building those insulated tiles? I'm sure it's got to be pretty toasty down there. Oof. Yeah, our dupes would already be scalded if they weren't wearing those suits. And we don't have a lot of suits to spare. Problem is, uh, we only have five units of reeb fiber left. That's not a lot. Okay, let's hope they've got something we can use here. Ugh, damn it. Ice? Don't care. Let's start seeing if we can't roll for some narcoleptics. Though I'm not holding out any hope. It just takes too long to find them. Actually, I'm going to check the mod options. Maybe there's a way I can lock in narcoleptic for everyone. That would save a whole bunch of time. So, I reloaded the game, I tweaked the mod, and now what the mod allows us to do is we can actually modify the dupes manually, as in we can configure them while we're doing it. It, it is kind of overpowered in a way, but the limits are this. We can only change their trait to always be narcoleptic. That's it. They can only have that trait changed. So we're going to change them to narcoleptic. Everything else has to stay the same. It's just faster than me respinning them all the time. And there's a rancher. Yes, we're probably going to want another rancher, so... Yeah, let me double check. Actually, wait a minute, what am I doing? This is late game. We don't ever get someone with a single trait at this point. We're always going to get someone with triple traits. It's the only way. And all of them have to have suit wearing. So, do we want suit wearing digging and rocketry? No. And in that case, we will just take the care package. That mod actually makes it pretty handy for us to get uh, Narcoleptic on all of them, though. And I'll try and limit it so that if the duplicate is really good because they've got a negative trait and we're tra or their, their positive traits cancel out, we'll instead do something else. We'll, we'll try and keep it as balanced as we possibly can. And down here, we're actually... Oh, there's a second ice biome. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Uh, well, this also seems to be where all the... I don't know if the heat's going down here or it's going over the other side. Uh, maybe try digging over this side, too. You guys can go all the way across. Oh my god. How far across does this thing go? Well, I still have not found the leak, but this is just a huge area. Oh my god, is this like two... Did two volcanoes spawn in here and then just sort of mess everything up? They really had ironed out the kinks and all the point of interest spawning last time I played, but maybe you still get the odd one. Right, and how's our research looking? Uh, we are currently researching, well, a little bit of everything. We're just trying to knock out everything that's left. Why? Because, well, there's nothing else to do with it. We're not going into the radiation-based one until a little bit later. So I'm just going to knock out everything I can while trying to get down to the oil biome. Uh, we definitely do... These atmos suits are kind of working out. I wish we could put a couple more people on them, but for now we're going to be a little bit limited. Oh my god, how has someone made a mess? Wait, how? Oh, buggery. Yeah, I made a mistake. I wanted to fill up this water tank so that the polluted water would overflow and go into the reed fibre, so I hooked it up to our main water to fill up the tank, and then I completely forgot about it, and that was a long, long time ago. Uh, I need to drain some water out of this system. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Hmm. Ah, can backflow it? What's the germs like in here? Fine, we end up with loads of germs in our clean water supply. It's it's not like we, we won't be the first base that's done that. Um, hmm. Yep, you can connect up there. You can be disconnected from there. Um, that should all start moving that direction, which means we can move that that direction. Perfect. That gets the toilets and sinks flowing. And we can mop up this mess. Oh, and all the duplicates are very relieved, I imagine. Okay then, now I just need to clean the water out of these pipes. Does anyone have plumbing yet? Actually, Jack, our critter rancher, I can totally go into plumbing. And they're trapped inside the base, so they'll find a use for it. In that case, we can have them do a quick excavation. Uh, what's in this pipe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I've got too much clean water in here. We'll just excavate out these four tiles of water, and then this whole system should be fine to go again. With lots of digging and lots and lots more digging, we're finally starting to see what's going on over here. And we still have no idea. Uh, at the same time, we've got another gate activation. 
Uh, yeah, we don't need sweet legs. And let's see, what do we got here? We've got... Oh, no. No. And no. Uh, so I suppose we're taking the sweet legs? Okay, we'll take them. So we're just going to stick together a quick Sweetler Ranch down here really quickly. Uh, we should really have them using this as uh, to do plants or something like that. Or They're basically a 5% bonus to plant growth. And if you train them up into their variants, their variants can actually give you a 50% bonus to plant growth. I'm just not bothered. Uh, just yet. I'm sort of more concerned with getting down here and seeing what's happening. Uh, what the hell? Okay, so this place hasn't broken out? Why? Mm. I spent all this time trying to figure this out. It turns out, no, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, I'll just double check by going a little bit further, but from what I can see, there doesn't seem to be any issues here. I'll go over this far and we'll... Yeah, once we're over that far, I think we can cut it out. And we can sort of continue on down here. This is working out quite nicely. Well, okay, so while I've been busy, distracted, off over here doing this thing, uh, a few minor things have shown up back here. Uh, one, this plant stifled. Uh, turns out it got really hot in here. I was wondering why. Uh, check the temperature overlay, it turns out, yeah, compost. Compost generate a lot of heat, so we're just gonna... They were meant to only be temporary, but I left them around a little bit too long. Uh, that's gonna make this place a little warm, but that's okay. We've got a nice biome up here, and I think we're gonna have to start running the oxygen shoes shortly, and that should uh, fix that problem. It hasn't gotten down near our crop area at all, so we're safe on that front, our crops are still good. It's just we'll have to put in a slightly more temperature resilient... Ah, there we go, Bliss Burst. A Bliss Burst in here will turn this place back into a great hall, and uh, that'll also stop people getting stressed out. One or two duplicates had high enough morale that this was a problem for them. Oh, and uh, when it comes to the cooking, we've now got access to frost buns, paku fillet, barbecue, pickled meal, roast grub fruit, and fried mushrooms. We have an entire smorgasbord of foods available for the duplicates, namely because there's just so much of it lying around. A lot of it, some of it's wild though, like uh, the spindle grub fruits, we're harvesting them wild. But we probably will have, be having some Sweetles joining us in a short while. Okay, down here, we're, oh my god, yay! It's the oil biome, I've been looking for this. This is what we've been looking for. Once we get to the oil biome, that gets us plastic and it also gets us into steel. There's fossil down there as well. Oh, finally. Though I don't think we'll break into the oil biome just yet. I want to go up as well and I want to see if there's any more swamps. Maybe a little bit left to right. Another swamp would net us more reed fibre. I would really like to get our hands on some more reed fibre before we go a, a, any crazier on the, uh, the Atmos suit front. I want every duplicate we've got to be able to be in an Atmos suit. And right now you can see we haven't really explored that much of the map. Oh! Salt water geyser. Well, looks like there's our water supply. Uh, it comes out at 95C. And we can overclock those things now with the Geotuner mods. Oh, yeah, that means we could probably hook that up to a steam turbine and it'll just give us straight steam and salt. Though at 12.8 kilos per second, we need a lot of steam turbines to handle that kind of pressure before it overpressurized. Like a lot of steam turbines. Mm, something to think about in the future. I'm starting to get starvation warnings for our duplicates. I think it's time we change their schedule slightly. Everyone needs an extra downtime slot. Uh, it just is taking them so long to get back to base because of the distance some of them have to travel. Well, some of them are fine. The ones that are living in base don't care. But we're just going to, as a standard, put everyone up a notch. Go on, Grumpy Bear, grab yourself some barbecue. You're going to need it. Uh, that should sort your calories right out. Perfect. Ooh. And everyone's morale is going to be nice and boosted as well now that the Great Hall is back up and running. Damn it, I'm almost out of time again, but uh, we do have plenty of gold to at least put in the automation in this section. In fact, we have so much gold. Uh, you, give me a conveyor rail. Perfect. Yeah, we'll make that out of copper. Then we just have to hook up a quick power wire. These things are only used intermittently anyway, so the power draw on them is minuscule. And we have loads of gold because these things are actually consuming it all. And we've got another smooth hatchling ready to go in there. We're actually going to have this place maxed at another time. We're already up to four of eight critters. Once we grab this egg out, it'll be slightly less annoying. And we'll just paste on those settings. And there, Smooth Hatch Egg's gone, and that's automated that section. In fact, yeah, let's just stick this in now. We're probably going to want to do this later anyway, so... You know, at some point they'll finish this, I swear. Just any time, they'll wake up any moment. There you go. Okay, that, that's three ranches. We're going to have to rip out that Rock Crusher. I'm thinking of fourth ranch down here for another set of critters. Which ones? I don't know. Probably some variant of poke shells. Or maybe multiple variants of poke shells. We could probably do... Hmm... Nope, I'll have to do some research into the different critters to see what they're useful for. Last I remember, the wooden ones weren't very useful. Uh, these guys were only really good for getting fossil. I wonder, do we need that much? Mm. Oh, and this? 
I don't think it's leaking temperature. I can't see just this area in here, but yeah, I don't think it's leaking out there. I think this was just whatever biome this spawned in. There was a bunch of igneous rock there and it's been soaking up the heat and slowly entombing itself. Ah, so all of that rush for nothing. Oh, you. Finish that off. I want a continuous ladder all the way up and down. And I mean a continuous fireball. Right, we're just going to rip straight down here into the oil biome. We want to get access to all the oil. We want to get access to the slicksters. We need to feed five critters to this thing. So we need five basic mutations. So we could put through, we have some basic hatches, some basic drecos, we've got some poke shells and sweetles knocking about, and that just means we need one more. And we have two options in that front. One is shine bugs. We actually found some shine bugs over here. There's one or two of them always knocking around. So we could try and shine bugs, though I don't know if flying critters can go through there. And the other option is shovels. We've got those shovel legs from earlier. And these tiles are made of obsidian, so we could put a shovel in here, though. The one that gets the other side, it would probably escape through those mesh tiles. We might have to replace those. But that we can worry about later. For now, we've managed to get our base boxed in. We've got ourselves some Atmos suits up. I'm thinking we're going to double our oxygen supply. Chuck down a second one of these. That brings us up to 3 kgs of oxygen. We can support 30 duplicates. Uh, we're going to need a gym as well. I want a gym to start training our duplicates because they are just too slow outside and we need to start building them up. Have, none of them have enough athletics. We can train that up though once we get a gym up and running and we might have to sit here for like 20-30 cycles. We'll just let it run in the background while all of the duplicates get up enough skill points to be at least suit training worthy. Uh, but after that, I'm thinking oil, steel, plastic. We just get that stuff all knocked out. Oh man, there's so much good stuff down here. Okay, but that, that is for the next episode. I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.